work not normally to be attempted at home by yourself, boys and girls. I'm finishing off the slicing of the bloom we created last Saturday on May 30th using techniques based on the archaeology of Lance Smith of Newfoundland. I'm using an axe as a hot set to cut into the orange rock bloom. Now, as you might guess, this would work so much better with a striker. At this point, I cut down about three quarters of the way from the opposite side. And all I'm trying to do now is join up the cuts. Cool the axe. Get a cheap axe for this, you're going to destroy it. This is extremely heavy work for a little curly man like me. You can see that the hammer I'm using is just barely within my control. And I'm pretty close to through. Such a large mass of metal, about five kilos, holds temperature for an extremely long time. I need to give it another heat. You can see I've laid down a copper sheet on top of the anvil. That's just in case I suddenly, like that, cut through. So you can see that I've separated off approximately a one third chunk of the total bloom. If you look at this sideways, to give you an idea about the depth of the cut. Um, yesterday I sliced from here down to that level. And I only had that last, that best half, day, half inch, three eighths of an inch to go for that final cut. As the material starts to cool, you can see that it's somewhat inconsistent within itself. There's still a lot of linear cracks that need to actually be reduced down um, and consolidated into a solid bar, although this is a quite a solid chunk of metal, if you can tell by my pounding on it. What I will be able to do is take this flattened surface here and give that a surface polish from the angle grinder, and it'll give us some kind of idea about the metal consistency. Right, now I've got the still hot bloom. Right now it's just at a dull, dull red. Remember the camera overemphasizes temperature. Clamped in the vise so that I can quickly use the angle grinder and polish off that top surface. This is going to do two things. It's going to give me some idea about the consistency of the metal itself, which we'll see in close-up in a minute, but also something about sparks. The spark, of course, the amount of feather, is a measure of the carbon content within the blue. Individual sparks actually have a reasonable amount of feather in them. 
the uh, amount of feathers seems to change as we work across the surface of the bloom, but that's to be expected. Remember that this slice is about through uh, one-third of the material, so we're recording the inside of the bloom when we make this spark test. That material is, uh, looks to me to be uh, having a little bit more carbon than a standard mild steel, which means it uh, has at least um, two-tenths of a percent carbon, probably uh, closer to 0.3. This is a material that might be ideal for the creation of axes if you were going to use that bloom for this purpose. Well, I'll give you a close-up now so you can see that surface fresh, give you an idea of uh, how many voids in that there are inside of the material. So if I very quickly run the grinder on the surface, Remember, this surface we're looking at is still uh, quite hot. It's uh, The color has just disappeared on it. Um, so it's uh, 800 degrees, maybe 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit minimum. And um, as fast as I can clean off that surface, it's reoxidizing. But you can see some voids, quite obviously, in the surface. But there's also some very, very solid metal created inside this bloom. This is a nice, dense, quite workable material. I'm extremely happy with the results of this smelt.